Good day guys and in this quick video I'm going to show you well basically you've got some kind of trouble going on with um, actually launching your games when you go to launch it it's saying something to do with the compression or your games aren't loading all together in this case another thing to check is let's have a look let's go to our hyperlaunch setup D drive hyperspin Let's launch it up and let's show you something that you should be looking at. Come on. Right, here we go. Hyper launch up and running. Right. So basically, we've got to the stage where. I don't know, you're setting up your system, you are going on to it, you've put in your emulated ROM path, you've put in your default emulator, you've got to your games, you've audited them and you've got green mostly <laughs> on the board. So now it's saying that yes we can find the games, yes it looks like these can run, yes everything's tickety boo, you've got uh, the correct emulator sorted, you've got the ROM paths, it can find the games, so th up to now everything's good. However, when you go to click on the little rocket, something happens. Now, this can be, well, this can be a few reasons, to be honest. Uh, let's have a look at what they could be. Uh, first off, go into your settings. So we're still on the system tab here. Go into your settings. Now, on this, change it to true or false. Wherever the opposite is, just change it. And then go back to your games and give it another go with your little rocket. Now it could have been just a case that you didn't realise they were zipped, you haven't ticked the box, you've ticked the wrong box or whatever and basically it's launching but it's launching it as if it thinks it's compressed so by doing that it may get it to work. Another thing is if you're still kicking off about a compression or your 7 zip or whatever it is you can't find something then another thing to do is again go back to the system that you're working on that isn't working, click on the settings tab at the top now, where it says extraction path at the bottom, or the bottom, if it's correct, Queen's English. <laughs> Sorry, my accent is probably terrible on this, and you Americans or um, <laughs> the more Scandinavian countries probably can't understand a word I'm saying. Anyway, uh, yeah, 7 zip, the extraction, ex extraction path here. This is basically where well basically where the compression is unzipped now in this case if I was to change this it would change it just for the system now that could be a good thing for you or it could be a bad thing I don't know you might want just this system to extract in certain places I'm I have all my ROMs extracted and I don't know if this is good or bad I know it's bad from a hard drive but I don't care to be honest because I set it up the way it is now my extraction path is it's probably not even set on here now Oh yeah, there it is. Um, basically, that sets it up for a single system. So, as it's saying, the, at the moment it's using the global. Now, if you want to change it so it just has an extraction path just for that system. So, basically, when it loads, uh, if your ROMs are compressed, basically it's going to extract the ROM and then try to load it. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to say, um, well, basically, where am I going to put this? Now, whatever that's set to, that's when it's going to extract the ROM and play it. Now, the handy thing what I like to do is I've got all my games, ROMs, whatever it is that I've bought and dumped <laughs> um, on big, massive hard drives. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, these aren't the fastest because the, the basically the, the bigger your hard drive gets, in most cases, the slower it goes. So I like to run off fast hard drives, just speeds things up a little bit. You know, I could be a talking bullshit now, I ain't no computer engineer or something, but in my mind that's the way it works, so that's what I'm going to tell you. Check it up if you want, Wikipedia that shit. Um, so what I'd like to do anyway, cut a long story short, is go into my global settings, 7-zip, uh, extraction path again, and where it says there, it may be a folder that's not actually existing in your computer so that could be spitting out an error so when it's tried to extract it's like hang on a minute this folder doesn't exist so it's kicking off for you saying the extraction path doesn't exist or something like that change this 
In fact, there's a good idea probably just to change this to somewhere which is handy for you anyway. I like to put it on my C drive because my C drive is actually a huge um, solid state drive. So the funny thing is, it takes a while for it to extract from the big drive, but when it extracts to my C drive, it's running off a solid state drive. So it's kind of saying, yeah, it's all stored on a shit drive, but when it extracts, it's on a good drive. I don't know. Does that make sense to you? I don't know. I'm probably waffling on. Anyway. Yeah, just make sure this extraction path is correct and somewhere that you want it to go. Um, the only other thing is, and we haven't come across this yet because I come, well, basically all the setups I've given you, I've set it all up for you. Now, another thing that could stop a game from loading inside Hyperlaunch is the module. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now, the module. I haven't brushed upon this in my tutorials yet because at the moment there's no need to. Um, the guys over at Hyperlaunch have actually been really good and they've almost set it up most systems to the stage where it's all set as default. If As long as you don't want to play with any settings then you can almost set it all up and not even touch a module and 90% of the time it will actually just work as standard. However, in some cases it doesn't and sometimes you do have to make changes. So. Um, let me see, pick a, a system, in this case I'll pick, I don't know, Nintendo 64. So Nintendo 64, for some reason, it's just not playing ball. Now some things that you could check is, go to your module at the top here. Now these are all the working emulators that work with it, however you've already chosen your emulator here, so we're choosing RetroArch, so when you go to modules, Basically, it's showing you all the ones that work, but we only are playing with RetroArch because that's the only one that's loaded. So, we then click on to here, and you see these little uh, icons at the top. Uh, first off, a good idea is to actually read the module notes. So here, someone's actually written loads of things that goes along with RetroArch. Now, a lot of the cases, especially with RetroArch, is these actually do a lot of systems. So, you know, there's a lot of gump in here that you don't actually need to know. But it's a good idea if you've got time, you know, spare a day or two on your hands to actually go through and read some of these. Um, especially if you're like this and you're troubleshooting. Because it will give handy hints of something that you may have missed along the way. Or something that I've missed in my tutorials. I'm not, you know, I don't ship gold bricks. So what I say may be incorrect, to be honest. I mean, I'm no Jesus pro at this. I'm just sh sharing what I picked up along the way. Anyway, enough of the waffle. So yeah, have a look at the notes on there. Here you can edit. I strongly suggest, unless you're good at this kind of shit and you're quite experienced, do not edit your modules because you'll end up just downloading new ones and <laughs> it just don't piss about with them anyway unless you know what you're doing. Okay, open module folder. You don't really need to do that. Okay, these are the ones that are good for you. Okay, first one is edit global module settings. Click on that one and you will greet it something like this. Now in the global edit for retro arch, whatever it is, I don't know, uh, basically these are the settings that you can change for retro arch. Now as you can see here, the first tab that's open is settings. Now what this is going to do is play with all the settings for all the retro arch in general. So as you can imagine, you know, if you've been setting up a few systems, especially following my guides, then a lot of these systems run retro arch. Now if you change any of the settings in this tab here as in settings you're going to change them for every system so take note on this one I wouldn't piss about with anything in here unless you really need to okay next tab is network now in here is uh, well everything if you want to play online I suppose I've never done it so I couldn't aid you in this and I couldn't tell you how or whatever um, as far as I'm aware it's quite hard unless you know who you're actually playing with as far as I know then you know, it's it doesn't work. Oh, it does work, but I've never done it, and it's quite hard to get working. In my eyes, so you know, comment below if you got it working and you're fucking loving playing the world on your internet or tinternet or whatever you call it. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't play with this unless you know what you're doing. But you know, have a read. Now, this is the one. This is the one that we should be playing with because what has happened is that's the overall settings. This is for this system that we're playing with. So we're on the N64 tab and this is the system that we want to play with. Now again, don't fuck about with things because 
messing with the settings too much, you'll forget it, you'll mess up something else that wasn't broken but now is broken, so now you've got two errors and you end up in a mountain of fault finding just to get a system working. So some of the things that you want to be doing is, an obvious one and a telltale one is, on my setup everything's done for you, but in this maybe not. So first thing, retro core. Uh, uh, sorry, rib retro core. What it's asking is, what do you want RetroArch to run the system? Now, as standard, as default, it will just actually look for the N64 emulator. I can't even remember what it is. <laughs> but basically, what you can do is you can go and uh, go to your emulator, go to uh, RetroArch, have a look inside your cores because that's where your cores are. And you should have something in here, one of these cores. Basically, you can choose what core you want to run this system. Now, I can't remember what the fuck N64 uses. At the top of my head, I think it might be the uh, Nfadden. Is it uh, Medfadden? Is there anything that looks like it? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. No, for the life of me, I cannot remember what it is. It's probably something really obvious as well. Anyway, um, obviously, just look on the forums, or whatever, what other people are using. But as default, it should be set up. But if not, then choose a different core. Experiment, you know, test the water. And then choose your core. But ensure that when you choose one of these for the libretro core, you choose the DLL file and not the info. As you can see, each one of these has got two files for each system or each core. What you want to be doing is choosing the DLL, not the info. So I'm not going to choose it for this system because I'll end up fucking it up. So I'm going to cancel out, but all you need to do is double click and it will input the core that you want to use for that system there. Now again, I strongly suggest you do a bit of research into it and find out which ones are the best core. But if that doesn't work for your system, then hell, try a different one. It's all up to you at the end of the day. Okay then, is it a Super Game Boy? No, overlays. That's if you want to use the bezels at the side or if you want to use uh, scan lines and things like that. I wouldn't fuck around with that, not at this early stage, unless you know what you're doing. Uh, video shader, again, same things. You know, you can do it this way, but the way I've set it up with my RetroArch is I do it all from within RetroArch. Feel free to play, but I'm not going to fix it for you if you fuck it up. Um, aspect ratio, again. All these you know you can play with it on free will but I suggest you know what you're doing before you do a lot of these are actually common sense and if you click on the little blue things at the side it will actually translate a lot of it for you so the main thing to do in this one is basically the live retro core if you can't get that working then change it on that one but again something to look at as you're going through your systems this is last resort though don't go fucking around with your modules unless everything else has been checked and again, fucking around in that can mess things up even more. Okay, and that is if you are if you can't get it to run basically from within Hyperlaunch. The only other thing that can be wrong is if you have a system which you don't have the bias for or if it's not set up. Everything that I've taught you so far, you will have those already set up. So don't worry about that and if it doesn't work um, if basically in hyperlaunch something isn't working then well <laughs> there's not much else you can do and it must be something that's really odd or specific to your system because that we've just checked basically everything that we can think of okay and that is that basically you guys good luck I hope you get it working and make sure you have a look at the other ones to see if there's any other troubles that you're having. Okay guys, thanks a lot. Bye now.